So today we finally have grade A Yinglong lithium titanate 45 amp hour cells. I have been waiting ages to finally get these. They are very expensive, but they should perform really well. Because previously we used grade B cells and these failed quite a few of my tests. But these should be different. They cost quite a bit more and I'm hoping that if they are matched they should perform really well. Before we get started, this video is not a comparison of lithium titanate to other chemistries. If you want to learn more about this chemistry and when and when you shouldn't use it, please check out some of my older videos which will be listed below. In this video, we're going to build a pack, see how well grade A cells are matched, and we're going to cycle in freezing cold temperatures and test whatever else we can. So let's get started. First, we're going to build a 6S configuration pack. These came straight from the box from China, so we are going to test the voltage first. So we have 2.64 volts, 2.64, 2.62, 2.60, 2.58, and 2.50. So these cells are a bit off, so we need to connect them in parallel and do a top balance. And to connect these cells in parallel, we're gonna use some of my homemade aluminum bus bars. And I made these bus bars by drilling and cutting some 1 8 inch thickness aluminum from the store. And you do not want to over tighten these. There is a torque spec on each cell, so be very careful. And not only did these cells not come with bus bars, but they did not come with these nuts. So these are actually from my old grade B pack. 2.6. 2.6. We're going to use this power supply set to 2.8 volts to top balance these cells. And to ensure that these are charged evenly, we're going to put one lead right here and the other lead over here. And we're going to wait till the current drops to zero, so this might take a while. Now we're at 2.8 volts and the current has dropped to zero, so these cells are top balanced and fully charged. We're going to use a DALI BMS and this is capable of 100 amps of charge and discharge current. By the way, there is a sticker here, but there is a solid connection to the balance lead so you don't have to worry about it. The bus bar is flush with the cell's terminal. Now the BMS is installed, so let's check the voltage at the BMS output and we have 16.8 volts. Now that we have a BMS, we're going to charge this battery up until we hit high voltage disconnect. And look at that, we already hit high voltage disconnect, so this pack is fully charged. And to ensure our cells are balanced, we're going to check the voltage of the individual cells one more time. 2.82, 2.83, 2.83, 0.83, 0.82, 0.82. So we're good to go. And notice how large this pack is. The volumetric density of this chemistry is pretty horrific. So I'm going to have to put this on a piece of wood so I can move it over to my capacity tester. So everything looks good and we're going to start a capacity test. Now the CBA4 has started the test and we will come back in about five hours when we have our results. Uh oh, we only pulled 38 amp hours. That is not good, you guys. We're at 2.1 volts per cell and everything looks fine, so that's not good. These might be grade B cells. And the voltage dropped off at 11.7 volts, which is 1.95 volts per cell. So I think this is actually an accurate test. That's not good. If these turn out to be grade B cells, I'm going to be pretty disappointed because they look really nice and the listing specifically stated grade A new cells. So we're going to charge this up and test it again. We're charging at 70 amps, so this is almost 2C for this pack. Now the battery is fully charged and we're going to try testing with a different meter and see what our results are. And the results are 38 amp hours, you guys. We got practically the same exact results as we did with the CBA4. So either these are grade B cells and they are not labeled correctly, or we have a bad cell. The next possibility is that the BMS high voltage and low voltage disconnect is not allowing us to get the full capacity of these cells. So what we're going to do is charge up a single Yinglong cell and do a cycle test with the CVA4. Now the cell is fully charged at 2.86 volts. So we're going to connect it to the CVA4 and do a capacity test. 
And the test has now started and the cutoff voltage is 1.6 volts. So this is a 0.2C test, so we're gonna come back in about five hours. Uh-oh. We only pulled 39 amp hours, so these test results are consistent. These are not 45 amp hour cells. Man, what a bummer. I'm so bummed. You know how much I spent on these? But yet again, I'm gonna have to start the returns process on AliExpress. That is unfortunate. I need to find a different supplier. I'm, I might have to buy these from Europe to get the good ones, I swear. So I was an idiot and I bought grade B cells. Very unfortunate and the main point of this video was to do high C rate cycling in my freezer. I wanted to see how well these perform in cold temperatures. And I still want to do that test, but I don't think it's acceptable to do with grade B cells. I know that some of my viewers would be very angry and they would call me an idiot for using grade B cells. They would say that my results are not valid because I'm not sure the history of these cells, these could be repackaged, and there is a good argument against using these, especially on a YouTube channel with so many viewers. If I get bad results, it can make the chemistry look bad. So I'm not gonna test with this pack. I'm gonna get a refund and that's it, I messed up. So I'm starting the collection with these grade B cells and surprisingly, these cells were my favorite lithium titanate cells. These were pretty cheap. I'm pretty sure they're Toshiba. They pulled full capacity at high and low C rates and I really like them. And even though this chemistry does have very interesting characteristics, I don't think that any of the benefits are very beneficial to people with solar power systems. So let's go over a few of them. First, the high charge and discharge C rate. When are you ever going to use a 5C charge rate or a 10C discharge rate for a solar power system? It simply does not happen. The next benefit is cycle life, and these can last 20 to 40,000 cycles in laboratory settings. But I've also made the argument previously that calendar aging might kill these lithium ion batteries before you ever hit the cycle life figure. So even though these could theoretically last 54 years if you cycle them once a day, if calendar aging kills them in 20 years, then what use is it to have that crazy high cycle life? And with solar power systems, we only cycle like once or twice a day. So what's the benefit of that high cycle life? Also, lithium iron phosphate should last a decade, maybe two decades. So by that time, we will have solid state batteries or something that's even better than what we have today. So I'd rather go with lithium iron phosphate for the time being, especially considering the price. The price of these is two to four times as much. These are two times as much as lithium iron phosphate and they're grade B cells. So that is not good. The next benefit is the low temperature performance. And that is a very good benefit. And if you are cycling in freezing, freezing cold temperatures every single day and you live in Antarctica, then you should give these a try. But if you're pretty much anywhere else in the world, you can get lithium iron phosphate, have low temperature charging protection, or have an internal heater mechanism, and you'll be fine. You don't need to spend all of this money for lithium titanate when we have proven chemistries that work in freezing cold temperatures by adding a little internal heater. It's not that difficult. The next benefit is the safety, and you cannot beat lithium titanate. The safety is incredible. We can cut into these, we will have zero smoke. You can even over discharge these. You cannot overcharge these. I think it's like 3.2 volts, and then they're heavily degraded and the materials inside change. So you can't really overcharge them. But nevertheless, the safety of these is the best on the market. So I think the only benefit to these cells is the safety and that they're very hard to kill. Lithium iron phosphate batteries, if you over discharge them, they're permanently damaged and they're done forever. These, you can pull full capacity after you over discharge them. The next question I have is why are these grade B cells on AliExpress all over the place? Why are there so many grade B cells? If you guys work in the manufacturing of lithium titanate, please leave a comment below because I would love to know why there are so many. I mean, these are labeled in the same size and weight as a 45 amp hour, and we're pulling 38 to 39 amp hours. Why is that? Is it just inherent in manufacturing these that you will have a lot of grade B cells? Because there are tons of listings online for them. 
With that said, I'm still gonna try to get some grade A cells and cycle them in the cold because I think it would be fun. But for solar power systems, I do not like these. The more and more I use these, I do not like them. Also, 12 volts is not a good idea, and some of my viewers said 24 volts with lithium titanate is not a good idea. They said that with this workable voltage range of this chemistry in the linear discharge curve, you should use it only for 48 volts, and that does make a lot of sense depending on which inverter you use. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I learned a lot and I'm really bummed that these are grade B cells. That was not fun, especially after the third test. I was like, are you kidding me? I thought I was doing something wrong, but no, these, these are junky cells. But I am glad that I got ripped off before my viewers did. So please check out the link below to know exactly which cells you should not buy. Anyways, I will talk to you guys soon and have a great day. Bye.